live from Bolarama in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. All season long, we will be raising money for bowlers and their families in the fight against the costs of this terrible disease. To donate or take part, go to candlepins4cancer.com as you see it on your screen. Today, we're pleased to welcome the stars of our semifinal stepladder matchup. Our previous winner and number three seed, Corey Packard, and our number two seed with a roll-off score of 605, Nick Norcross. And now your hosts, Paul Grant and Mike Morin. Thanks, Greg Guglia. Thanks for watching on Cannon Bowling Network. Please share this match with your friends and family. Subscribe free on YouTube. Doesn't cost you a dime. Canopy Mode Network, free on YouTube, and welcome those on the WON Sports Network across this great nation. Corey Packer, the number three seed, won last match against Ryan Southall Euler Clinic. Over 400, a 434, a 145, a 135, and a paltry 154. <laughs> uh, things went well for me. I, I, I'm very fortunate on that. Uh, Ryan, Ryan was on, had some tough breaks, missed a few. It, that's all it takes. Now you're born teammates the 2022 world championship for academy lanes you've won it twice together now you're against each other side by side uh it's going to be a good match he's a great bowler a uh, great friend it's going to be fun no matter what that's going to be your best accomplishment in the world tournament isn't it or is there other oh, thing you want to be proud of it, it, it's amazing it really is it's yeah. it's really just great <laughs> that's like that's all i can say you're a duck pin bowler also how does that transfer to can and bowling um it's a little bit easier because the balls are smaller to hold. Um, I like, I, I grew up with this. Um, this is my, my love, so. Are you from Sutton, Massachusetts, a little quaint town. Tell us what are the attractions are in Sutton, Mass, beside Corey Packard. <laughs> uh, it is a, it's large in area, but it's a, a, an old farm town. Uh, it's just picturesque. It's, it's really nice there. All right, good luck today. Bye. Mike Moore with world champion Nick Norcross. From one world champion, two-time world champion Nick Norcross. Two times, that's right. Yeah, I, for for a guy as young as as you are, you have a lot of accomplishments. But I'm kind of interested in other things about Nick Norcross. For one thing, uh, I have to say that I love the photos that you post on Candlepin Chat. Where the heck do you find some of those old shots? So it was probably I, I want to say it was middle school. Woburn Bowl had a lot of old stuff from you know when they opened in the 40s and 50s. And then I got copies of that stuff, and then I kind of started exploring to see what else was out there from other towns and different places. And then I just started saving stuff and finding more things. And then when COVID hit and there was nothing to do, uh, Brian Basilinski and I, we both run the page. He said, why don't we start putting the stuff out now? So it's been very successful, and there's still a lot more to go. So, so you're, you're kind of an old soul, aren't you? Yes, I was born in the wrong era, <laughs> wrong generation. <laughs> but you're just old enough to have actual done some uh, some TV shows, which almost all the other bowlers have not, other than Phil Clough. Yeah, I was very fortunate. I got to be on like the the last year on Comcast. It was the kids show, but I got to do that. But I've just been really lucky and fortunate to bowl with and against bowlers from, you know, like the Channel Five era and a little bit further back. So been yeah. lucky. And here's what else I like about your, your uh, Facebook page. Lots of food pictures. <laughs> Lots of food. That's all Cheech. He tags me in all those. Oh, <laughs> okay. all right. So all good stuff. I'm looking at you because you're not eating all the waffle pizzas he's putting up there. No, it's a lot of Dunkin' Donuts in the mornings. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, good to see you. Congratulations on being here. And now you get to play your buddy. Thank you. Yeah, this is a rematch from yeah. last year in the yeah. first ladder. So it'll be fun. Good. Thank you, Nick. All right, before we start, I want to bring in Bob Allard. Bob works here on his day off. Great job here at Bolarama Portsmouth, Bob. A great bowler over the years. Military Still. veteran also. Yeah. Enjoying your day off? Uh, yes. <laughs> this, I wouldn't, wouldn't have it any other way. There's some good people here watching some good bowling. Um, it's going to be a good match coming up here. Um, come on down. If you're in the viewing audience and you're close, come on down and say hi to everybody, and we'll be glad to have you. I so. just want to thank you for your contr contribution to Candlepins for Cancer. You collect bottles and cans. For donation to the Cancer. Yeah. You have the lemon drop pool, the four or six pin for donations. Yeah, that too. Yeah, I got a lot going on, so it's all to a good cause. So, All right. All right. Thanks for helping out today. No problem. Bye, Ballad. Okay, Mike Warren, ready to go. Let's do it. Back to Greg Gouillard. Thanks so much, Paul and Mike, and hello to everyone once again watching on Candlepin Bowling Network and on the WON Media Network. If you've never seen Candlepin Bowling before, it's just like uh, big ball bowling, except you get three small balls instead of two big ones, and all the pins on the plate stay on the plate. 
And as long as you don't throw a gutter ball, it can be used as live wood. Remember, it's tougher than it looks. Thank you, Greg Guya. Let's bring in Mike Warren again. Mike, good to be back with you again. Privilege and honor to be with you again. Well, thank you for having me back. This is the match I've been looking forward to. Two guys that were uh, world champions uh, when the Worlds came to uh, Academy Lanes just a few months ago, and here they are up against one another today. Good good people, good friends, good bowling. This is the match you definitely want to share with your friends and family. It's on Canopin Bowling Network again on YouTube. Free to subscribe as well. Like, share, follow. Get notified when we go live. And wow, what a shot! A spare! How about that? Great way to start this match. Three versus two. Number three seed, Corey Packard, 434. Last time out against Ryan Southall, the number four seed, who earlier defeated Phil Clough. Ryan was tremendous at 384, first match. Well, we're off to a great start when you get a, a trick shot like that made in the first box. These are the matches you look forward to. You, don't, you lose sleep over, you can't get yourself so pumped up to cover these matches. Two terrific guys on and off the lanes have contributed so much to this great game of candle and bowling. Packard on the bonus. Parallel pins to the right. I call it parallel time, like Dark Shadows. Seven pin on the left. 15 through one, first of three strings. Total pinfall moves on to face the number one seed, 22-year-old, the Terminator, Charlie Collins. $2,000 on the line for the winner. Packard, good bid. Six right, seven left. Wait for the wood to settle down by yeah. rule. How do you shoot this one? Wait and hoping to, well, maybe it's good that it's up close like that. He can get some spinning going on after that last shot that he made. The split, spare. He went red line to Harvard and gets nine, 24 through two. Of all the things you say, that one always cracks me up, <laughs> the red line. I don't practice these. They just come out natural. You sure you want to admit that? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> Our first look this afternoon at lefty Nick Norcross who in addition to the fact that he is a kind of a, uh, a historian of bowling, he's also a model train collector. Yes, the train collector I call him. And I start there, he gets a strike! My Michael Jackson voice there. <laughs> <laughs> well, the trains are running on time for Nick Norcross right now. I, I, I did two 10 stringers yesterday in the Friday Night Pro League. 25 strings, less than 24 hours, so voice a little raspy. Uh, what happens if you get laryngitis? People will be happy. <laughs> <laughs> There's the line of the day, folks. <laughs> oh, Three in that first ball. Uh, Norcross, half whist, they call it in the right. Greg Guia explains the half whister. As he said, 15 also through one. Greg will explain the half whistler. Canelton shot after this box. For those in WN Sports Network, tough five. Strike five, spare five. I hate when that happens. It's like two tens, yeah. 20 through two. Greg. Only the most ubiquitous leave in Candlepin bowling. Once there was a match between a Boston team and a Worcester team many decades ago. And uh, one time the Worcester bowler on the 10th box punched out those dreaded two pins, the two eight or the three nine. And one of the Boston bowlers jeered, you're halfway back to Worcester. And so the, so the name stuck. One time it happened to Sticks. I come up with the nickname. Why are you saying that nickname? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to just record that, Greg, and every time he calls you, just play it? <laughs> the smooth sounds of Greg Guya on Candlepin Bowling Network and WON Sports. Packard, 3 1 split. Wow, he got it. Spare. So that is two out of three spare shots that you might call trick shots. Almost. And Milo will get a good kick out of that one. Two out of three ain't bad. He would, but he's no longer with us. He will not be down for breakfast. Sorry. <laughs> Splits. 34 and a ball through three in the first of three. Portsmouth Bolarama, Portsmouth, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Corian Lane, 16. On the head pin again. Five left, 6 10 right. Not easy shot normally, but that piece of wood to the left. Yeah, he'd like it a little bit more forward, probably. There's not much to work with it. Boy, you're threading the needle to make this one. But the way he's been bowling this game, mark it down. It's great, be a spare. Great movie, pay, great movie pay, uh, pay it forward, by the way. 41 through three. He went right instead, he got it! Oh. Wow! <laughs> opposite side. See, whatever I say, do the opposite, right? That's three trick shots in a row. 
51 and the ball through four. Wow. I told you it's gonna be a great match. Nick Norcross is wondering what he walked into here. I wonder if DraftKings is involved in this match. <laughs> Just join some of the charity DraftKings if you are. We'll take 1% of the cut. <laughs> well, other than the strike of the first box, Nick has been kind of fishing and hasn't even hit the head pin, really. Last box he didn't. I think he left it standing after three tries. The South Bar, Arlington, Massachusetts, 2-2 split, 3-6 right, 4-7 left. First string of three. The one in the face, number one seed, Charlie Collins, the Terminator. That's good pinning, eight. 28 through three. Down 13 in the string, up against the spare from number three seed, Corey Packard. Nick was in the ladder series last year, the runner up to Brian Fuller Jr. Great job by Alley Chat, season one. You watch that on Alley Chat. Norcross crossing over for strike bid. That looked good. He only got eight. And a tough split, the four left, ten right. Yeah, and the wood is <clears throat> coming out to the front, which is not especially helpful. But he'll wait and see if it rolls back into a more favorable position. And it is still moving, moving, moving. The good, the good thing about Cannonpin Bowling versus Tenpin, you get three balls instead of two, and you get to play the pins that fall down the wood on the playing surface. And that's what Homer, Simpson's li Homer Simpson likes most about Boston, is that you can do uh, a bowling game that has actually three balls instead of two. I don't know if you ever saw that episode. No, never really watched The Simpsons, though. You got to watch it. It's, it's Cannonpin Bowling. I'll have, to, I'll have to watch that I one. I think then. it's episode like number 600. I'll have to look it up. Message me. I'll look, look it up. Okay. 10 to Noah Cross. 38 through four, had a strike five to stop at that five box, lower to score, but don't ever count him out. I actually uh, interviewed the guy who was the producer for that particular episode. He's from Watertown, I think, originally. And- uh, Watertown, Mass. Yes, yeah, exactly. And it was interesting getting the behind the scenes story and getting the artwork really, really good and authentic. Because you never see Cantlip and Bowling in a cartoon yeah. or animation. So I highly recommend, if you haven't seen it, it came out maybe four or five years ago, and it's a fun episode. And Homer Simpson loves Boston because you can have three balls in the bowling. Back on the check mark, leads up to 3-6-10. On that spare was 6-57 through four. Yeah, 19 pin lead through completed boxes for these two guys. He'll get a nine, 66 half. Picking up where he left off last match, 145, 135, and a 154 double strike down the stretch. Well over 400, 434, I think he had for an extra yes. hundred dollars in bonus money for Corey Packer, teammate of Nick Norcross in the world. Head pin hit. This is a diamond. Yeah, he's making a triangle. Three, five, six. Well, you know, there's just enough wood there that you know. I think you can take this one down. Oh, I know he can he can do it with with or without wood, but sometimes it adds to the fun of the game. Packed house here at Bolarama. We keep the lanes left and right open for this match. Everything else is full pretty much, and he gets a spare. Another mark, 76 and the ball through six. So he averaged nearly 145 for the first series, and a good pro average is 120. Yeah. Four spares. Norcross got a break. The one, two, and the four. These, like two pinners, go just a little bit over one and two times without wood for Pro Bowler stats by Kenneth and Bowling Network. One of the um, questions on the little form that we had them fill out so we can say some things about them, both Corey and Nick both say the two top people they admire in the game of Kenneth and Bowling are Tommy Olsta and Craig Holbrook. Not bad choices. Kind of get that, yeah. He got it off the wall, spare. Needed that one, 48 half plus one. Yeah, see, people think that's lucky when that happens. No, it's because they're good and they consistently hit right where they need to and you get those kinds of breaks. Being in your object pin is the key. Yep. As Reese says, the head pin falls down. Wouldn't that be something if you hit the head pin to fall down on a spare? Very hard to do. Yeah. So we had the one five fall down uh, when uh, 
Corey was on a double strike. I think Bob Allard's icing him. <laughs> I was going to ask if that was the case. I can read your mind. Eye in the sky. Nick Norcross off to the right, just three. Tough break, 51 half, down 15. First of three. Canopin Bowling Network, WON Sports. Canopins for Cancer. To donate to the Bowlers Charity, Canopins for Cancer.com via Venmo. One of two ways, Canopins number four, Cancer.com. Follow the link via Venmo, or you can go to Venmo, type in Canopins for Cancer, donate any amount. Canopin Bowlers helping Canopin Bowlers going through cancer treatments. $28,000 paid out. To Caleb Moles and their families going through chemo treatments. Nick Norcross, 9, 60 through 6. Over to Mike Moore, Mike Morin right now. All right, we're going to put lane 16 up on the board right here with Corey Packard addressing the pins. High back swing and generally a pretty smooth follow through. And then that happens. That is what you call a center whister. 1-5. Talk about perfection. That is a bullseye shot. A that, center Worcester, is that your creation or did you read that? Called, that's called that. But okay. that's like a, a sniper shot. I call it a sniper shot. You're right, right in the forehead, you know, <laughs> and you get two pins out of it. Well, that's going to slow Packer down just a little bit and let Nick uh, get back into the match. That's why I hate half Worcesters. It's momentum killers almost every time. Well, you know what? When you make it, it it's such a great shot to watch go down. Ask Justin Lyon, is he got a match against Chuck Drozier to talk about last match at Riverwalk Lanes. Won an ACST title on a much spare, on a conversion on that half Worcester shot. So Corey Packard re-racks the pins uh, for a new set of 10 uh, and hopes to uh, have a more favorable result on the first ball. He uh, works as an audit analyst at Saples where he's been for uh, just about 30 years. Golf, running, pool, and cribbage are his outside work and bowling interests. You like cribbage? Never played it. Yeah, Never yeah, understood it. Yeah. Oh, Greg Ouya likes cribbage. Yes. All right, Greg. I don't get cribbage. I played a couple times growing up. I don't get it. Well, you play cards, and it, uh, 15 is good except when you want 31, and uh, there's pairs, and uh, you also, um, if you get a jack on the first card, you get two for his heels. Uh, that's cribbage. It's a really simple game with a pegboard as well. Yeah, but can you drink and make money, uh, and uh, can you drink and gamble at the same time? Uh, with the right attitude, sure. <laughs> or a bad one, one or the other. <laughs> All right, there it is. That was a spare, correct? Yes. 95 and a ball through eight here in the first. Corey Packard continuing the sizzling here in Portsmouth. Nick Norcross, 60 through six, has a strike and a spare, but even up. Due to low fill, strike five in a five box, had a spare three also. Back to Mike. And Nick is uh, still fishing. Hasn't had a whole lot of luck hitting the uh, head pin. The last good head pin hit left a big split. That's when it gets really discouraging when you put the ball where you want and you get something that doesn't resemble what you thought you should get. The one, three, six, and nine for the lefty from Arlington. Been working at uh, the Woburn Bolodrome, I think, since oh, his teen years. Thought that was going to go, but the nine pin remains. And the match is uh, still anybody's game, of course. When you have two bowlers this good, unless you've got about a 70 pin lead, you know, everything's in play. Absolutely. And Nick Norcross is capable of an explosive string at that same Woburn Bowl drum he loves so much. He was at the Pro Series Elimination Doubles event, and in one of his five qualifier strings, rolled 196, wow. including a four bagger. Good information to know. These guys are amazing with their uh, recall. And that was a strike, and? I'm not going to say it. You're no, I'm not going to say it either. You have to say it. You're doing the play-by-play. -play. Oh, I forgot. Wow! <laughs> you say it too much. <laughs> uh, all right. You, I think you, we're tied 3-3 now, best of seven. You goad me into saying it. And then you tell me I say it too much. <laughs> My feelings are hurt. Uh, a treat to work with you, Mike. Thanks for being here. Sure, butter me up. Oh, wow! Look at that, that. Was, that was a hammer. <laughs> right? A thunderous shot obliterated the pins on lane 15. Are you sure there's not piano wire back there tripping the pins? Thunderous shot, strike on spare. <laughs> 105 through 8, 115 plus 2 through 9. 
the legend of Corey Packer continues. That's how you answer the strike that Nick Norcross threw just before him. See, we talk about wow, good things happen. Wow t-shirts, wow bowling to help support campus for cancer. And you have a new uh, version, right, of the wow the t-shirt? Fins, yes, with bowling pins on it. We have classic, classic wow and wow 2.0 with bowling pins. Wow 2.0? Yep, yep. Well, it doesn't say 2.0 on the shirt. That's right. the second version. I got it. Kind of like your second version of the Lunch of Tom and Stacia, right? Audiobook possibility? I'm thinking about it. I got your last copy here in Portsmouth today. Send yeah. me a check in the mail for your signature, by the way. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, the 10 pin didn't go down. He thought he should have had it on the first ball, but he was gesturing the 10 should go down. It did not. The pins don't listen to our body language. I think we need to mic up the pins so they can hear us. 124 through 9 at 10, 134, first string. Well, that's about par for the course. That's actually under average for him today. today yeah, wow. <laughs> Incredible. If I'm not mistaken, Corey Packard hit the head pin on every single one of his 10 boxes. Wow. Thank you, Greg. Somebody's paying attention. Thank God. No. Nick Norcross, final two boxes, first of three strings. And look at this, spread eagle plus the five. Uh. All right. What are the odds on this one, Mr. Statistician? For him, better than mine. <laughs> yeah. Good try. That four the seven. Two, four, seven. It'll take seven on the fill for his eighth frame strike. Both these balls are championship pedigrees, so expect him to come back fiercely next string. You don't see too many bad strings like this from Nick Norcross. 95 through 9. I mean, if he can put a, a 20 fill in the 10th frame, 115, that puts him two marks down going into the next game. Yep. Big if. Yes. So that these guys, any given day, like I said, any given string, these guys are, are outstanding bowlers and great ambassadors of the game. Nick, the young, low 30s, Corey Packard, his 50s. Two classy bowlers. Final box of the first string, looking to go with a spare. And two full, two, four, seven again. And Corey will have a decent lead after one, but that's not safe. Yeah, a 30-pin deficit against Corey Packard, not a good thing. But if you're Nick Norcross, you know you're going to be in it. Nine box, 104, 134, 104, 134, 104. Corey Packard by 30 over Nick Norcross along with Mike Warren. Paul Grant, Craig Gouillard, and Caleb from Bowling Network, and WON Sports Network. Back with our second string in just a moment. <laughs> Candle pins for cancer. Roll-off's coming to Sanford Bowlerama this Tuesday, March 14th. Weather pending, 11 a.m. Thursday, March 16th, 11 a.m. for men and women. Saturday, March 18th, 9.30 a.m. and 3 p.m. Sunday, March 19th, 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. A second Saturday added on, March 25th, 9.30 a.m. and 3 p.m. Register Candlepins with a four, cancer.com. Candlepins, number four, cancer.com. You can also donate online via Vemo to candlepinsforcancer.com. After that qualifying round we'll, at Stanford Bowlerama, Stanford, Maine, the top five men, top five women will come together for the first ever mix live Ladder show here at Stanford Bowl Rummer out there in, in Maine, April 16th. Mike Moran will be there with Bob Lee as Greg Gouillard is getting ready as best man in his friend's wedding. So, Greg will get a break from me. I'll bring in Bob Lee at Bowl Rama. That's be a fun match to watch. Register Candlepins number four, cancer.com. $80 entry fee per ship, unlimited shifts allowed. Candlepins for cancer.com. Go, ladies, go. Let's go, Maine Bowlers, too. Well, I really look forward to that. Explain to me, though, how the qualifying works. Is it individual, separate? Uh, individual scores, men and women, they bowl their own roll-offs. Then we'll separately. take separately. Separately. Yep. Okay. And then we take the five top scores of men, top five scores of women for the first time. We're doing a one with one, first man, first woman, highest score together, two with two, three with three, okay. four with four, five with five. It's the best against the best. And we'll have Josh Daly bowling there as well. He's here on hand, supporting Charlie Collins. The number one seat up next for $2,000. Now back to our second string here on Canop Mullen Network and the WON Sports Network. Shout out to Jonathan Rios for putting together the post production. Instant replay in slow motion. Nick Norcross down 30. 4 2 split. Head pin, sadly. Yep. You got to get a GPS out there. <laughs> yeah. 
Not an easy spare either. Only a four drop. He was brilliant at the Pro Series doubles at Woburn Bulldrome, Woburn Mass, a couple weeks ago. Ended up with a four bagger, 196. He also has two 200s, a 210 and a 202 in his career. He slipped there, and that'll be a seven. Play by play with Mike Morin. Tough start for Nick Norcross, who's doing some practice slides on the approach, just in case there's any stickiness. That can play with your mind uh, when you're just wondering, how should I finish the slide? Should I go harder? Should I go softer? That's right. It tends to be a tackier approach here, so sometimes it's a bit of an adjustment for bowlers here in Portsmouth. Nice nine drop there. Four pin left up. Tell you what, uh, I, I'm fine with the synthetic lanes, but synthetic approaches, I've had some bad experiences with them. A lot of lanes are doing that now because it's much more cost effective. Yep. Seeing more and more like that. And he got robbed by the wood there, roadblock, tough break. It was hard to scoot around that wood. Now going for the 10, and he missed it for a 9, 16 through 2 in the second of 3. Bookie birthday parties here, Portsmouth Bullerama, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Check out their website or call them today, Portsmouth Bullerama, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. 22 lane facility, arcades, always a big crowd here on hand, lots of leagues. Great owner of Bart Medeiros, Bob Allen, helping out here also. Doing a great job. Staff here is terrific. They have Schneggins Pub here also. Food. Great pizza. Full around up, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Back to Mike Morin. Yeah, even before um, the Medeiros family took over the bowling center a few years ago, uh, the Jenner Modest family, of course, owned it since 1956. And uh, I did rock and ball here for a couple of years on Friday nights. And the highlight of my night, I'd bring my family, because my daughter liked to do rock and ball at the time, and we would have one of their pizzas before we started. And we looked for the pizzas were so good, I'm sure they still are. You always tell me stop talking about food, and now you're going Scott Zolak on me. <laughs> Take a look at Nick Norcross's or Mike Machichi's Facebook pages if you want to see some great food. <laughs> I mean, some decadent stuff, making, uh, putting uh, pizza toppings on waffles and, and confetti and all this other stuff. Uh, not for me. No? No, no. Just a burger and fries guy? No, we're a, we're a chicken guy. Chicken and broccoli. Grilled chicken. Are you, are you a foodie? Are you, uh, you know, a good cook? Be. I, was, I was doing good for a while, so I had the injury, so yeah. weight's back on again. But what can you do, you know? Hard to do it with the... Uh, can't do core exercises right now, so it's tough. So we got to start walking more. But, yeah, I enjoy a good meal. I love spumoni, though. My favorite dessert is spumoni. <laughs> Can you spell it? S-P-U? No, no, oh, no. S-P-U? Is it S-P-U? S -P -U? Yeah. Or S-P-A? Yeah. And I couldn't pronounce the sauce when I was, like, like eight years old going to Bertini's restaurant in Salem. And I said, can I have it with the clarinet sauce? It's clarinet sauce. I couldn't pronounce it, so I call it clarinet sauce. <laughs> That's no, a six of the family tradition. All right, back to the bowling action. Uh, neither bowler lighting it on fire this string so far. You can tell I have enough trouble with English. <laughs> yeah, I call that oh. an Oreo cookie shot. He got the cream in the middle, left the wafers on the outside. Eight box, 17 through two. He's up one in the string, 31 in the match. He's waiting for Nick Norcross is what he's doing here. Yeah. Back to Mike Warren on play by play. Yeah, he is, um, Nick is still missing the head pin. Rather uncharacteristic of him. And I, I don't really have an explanation. We could talk to him, and we will at the end of the match. Well, that's, I think, where he wanted to hit it. Uh, but the nine pin remains. So he's got a piece of wood that's going to back up probably to the lip of the, uh, the plate. And he'll get a 10. So now he's at 25. He's trailing by 30 pins going into this match, essentially a tie match. I should say a tie string in progress. But Nick hasn't shown any signs of uh, really, he just seems like he's fishing. And we've all been there. I'm not a good fisher. I'm not, I'm just, I can't sit still that long. That's my problem. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Uh, now that was a, a powerful ball, 
And uh, look at what he's got to show for it. But I tried fishing one time. I'm no Charlie Moore, but one time I couldn't catch anything. Like, this isn't for me. You a fisher? Uh, I am not, and it probably goes back to when I was in day camp as a kid. Some kid whipped his re, uh, his uh, rod back, and as he was going to cast. Look at that. Wow. Beautiful shot for Nick Norcross. The seven, the nine, and the ten. Maybe that will wake him up, do you think? I think talking about fish got him going. It could be. Anyway. Six in the ball through four. To finish the story, the kid reels back to, uh, to fling it out, and it didn't hit the water. It, it caught me in the air. So. Wow. Yeah, that was a lovely experience. Did you get in the air? <laughs> I, had, I had a minnow in my ear. My only, my only good experience with tuna is canned tuna fish. <laughs> I'm with you there. Do you like celery in your uh, tuna fish? I do, I yeah. Do too. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Makes it more flavorful. All right, no more food talking for now. Okay, we'll stop. We're going to think it's the sports of you, Scott Zolak. S sorry, folks. We we'll look at that sign, Zolak and Bertrand, 98.5. I'm one of the monitors here. Right, 4 6 does not go. He had uh, planks in front of both pins, which were not at all helpful. And Corey is still struggling this game. Nick, too, except he did make that wonderful shot here of the 7 9 10 with Wood just a moment ago. And that might be what it takes to get uh, Nick Norcross going. Right now, Corey's up one in the second string of three of 31 in the match. His high single is 195. His career best average for a year, 130. High triple, 455. High five, 737 from Sutton, Massachusetts. Well, he got just enough of, of the uh, head pin. Sometimes when you just nick it like that, you get some really good action off the sidewalls. And he's got the 310. And he's got some wood. I'm not convinced this is good wood. But, again, he's such a good bowler, he'll... Try to make it work for him. I think it can work if it's that object, obviously, like that. Bingo. There it is. I know how to play the shot. I just can't get the results. Yeah, there you results. go. Well, that's good because we pay you to talk and not bowl. I think I was a lot better at Skittle Bowl. <laughs> by Aurora. Oh, my God. I forgot about Wooden that. Pins. I love that game. That where you'd swing the, the, the little ball on a string? Yeah, we did that here with Tom Ulster and Peter Flynn, actually, uh, who bowled first. We did a little. Uh, uh, Are you serious? Yeah, we did that. Yeah, you can watch it on Kenneth Mullen Network. Yeah. Love that. Yeah, Peter Flynn won the match, but I said Tom Olster beat him uh, on a Skittle Bowl, and overall in their career, Tom hasn't been on t total pinfall. So Tom got a kick out of that. <laughs> All right, well, here's a tough shot for Nick Norcross. Uh, but you know what? That one pin could be putting itself in a position that he can sweep it over. Or is he going to bounce the two uh, with the pin in front of 4-7? Well, you be like me and throw it in between the pins. Yeah. Both on spares. Spare 7, 43 through 4. WON Sports Network and Candlepin Bowling Network. The broom is out. The captain instead. Thought he might go way, way right in that wood. I don't know if that's makeable, but I thought that's what I would do. But what do I know? I'm just a regular league bowler for years. And up the nine. 52 half, halfway through his match. Charlie Collins, the Terminator, the number one seed, 22 years on deck. Next championship match. All right, Nick is hoping to pound the head pin here and get his game back on track. Down by 30 pins going into the match, and he goes too far to the right, doesn't even catch the head pin. And now he's got the four horsemen left side, which is a little bit more challenging than if he'd had it on the right side. Just missed that head pin, object pin. It's high triple, 496. High five, 763. High 10, 1426. Again, two 200s in his career, 210, 202. And recently, a 196, like you said earlier, in the Pro Series in Wuben Balladrome, Wuben Mass. Four strikes in a row. Very impressive. And that, I, I'll tell you, I talked to him earlier about before today, does that winning that world title for the second time help your confidence? I said, absolutely. He just seems like he's on a different level now since that win since that win uh, in, in Academy Lanes last November. Grateful to, to win it once, but twice. Yeah, just being there is, is amazing, too. All right, back to Mike. All right, missing the head pin, and it, that's all that's left. A lot of action in the back. It's no like woods. go one and two times. Like, you get a break missing the head pin because you missed the first time, so a lot of times you miss the second time. No official stats, but what I can see, it seems, it seems like, not official, I didn't do Bob Lee research, it looks like it seems to go every other time. 
Well, in any event, he got a good a good fill on the nine and then just wasted it, sadly. Case in point. Yeah. I'm right once in a great while, not too often. But I mean, let's talk about how important every pin is. And that's the Paul Grant special. Missed the second, make the third. Ten. These bowlers, the five bowlers into the ladder series, lining up just 11 pins from bottom to top. In the first match that uh, hopefully you saw, it was Ryan Southall over Phil Clough. And the higher seat prevailed in the next match, Corey Packard over Ryan Southall. And uh, that may change this time if Corey continues to maintain his 30 or so pin lead over Nick Norcross. Nice ball in the pocket. Nine. The kingpin, the five pin remains. I don't know why they call it the kingpin. It's behind the head pin. I've always thought the same thing. It's got to be that, you know, it's, you know, it should be the pawn pin or something like that, you know, or the bishop or the knight, the rook, you know. The kingpin should be the number one pin, the kingpin, you know. Why is it the five? Just, just, just asking, just saying. You know, I, you have these anger issues that I need to talk to you about. <laughs> well, not anger issues, just, you know, oh, kind of okay. half kidding, half serious. <laughs> I have anger issues sometimes in traffic. I'm not patient in traffic sometimes. I have to get better at that one. God's going to kill me for you that one. you talk to yourself or other drivers? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> now the Paul Grant special. Missed the second. Make the third. Ten. 65. Make that 66 through six. He's so he, five yeah. in the string, 35 right. in the match. So he adds another five pins. Nick Norcross still, you know, is within striking range when you're as good as he is. But time does eventually run out in a three-match set. Past the halfway point of this match, Paul Grant, Mike Moore, and Greg Guya on Canopy Mola Network and WON Sports. And there is a strike for Nick Norcross. 71 plus two through seven. The important thing is how can he follow it up? Because every time he's had a mark, it, it hasn't gone too well, except he did have back to back marks, third and fourth frame. So I guess you could look at the last half game and know that he's improved. And look at this. Uh, Second time he's done this one. Wow. That's a bad wow. Spread eagle plus the five. Well, at least you won't miss a pin on the lane. That's the only good thing, I guess. Consolation prize. Not that's a good thing. Don't tell him that. I know. He's not mic'd up. Good bid there. Look oh. at this. Almost pulled it off. Well, the four pin was thinking about coming forward and taking out the two, but it didn't. And for him, that's good. It's an eight pin fill. Dominoes did not deliver that time. Eight in the strike, ten in the box. I thought we were done with food, Paul. Oh, that's right, too. Sorry. <laughs> it's, that's, yeah, it's all like Bertrand science make me think that way, I guess. 79 through 7, 89 well, through 8. We're, we're uh, broadcasting at lanes 15 and 16. We want, right. we want people to come out to shenanigans, that's why. Well, that's it. We're right in front of the, yeah, I'm here, I'm smelling nothing but food while we're doing this. Oh. What's your favorite food, Mike? Uh, I, would have, food. I would have to say I love potatoes. I know, that's boring. Packard, nine. The sweet potato, regular potato? Oh, yeah, a white potato. I have no use for sweet potato, even though I know it's better for me. <laughs> and lots and lots of butter. I like crab rangoons. Osaka and Merrimack on 495. They're awesome. Best crab rangoons around. Osaka, Merrimack, Mass. Try and get them to sponsor us. Spare for Packard. Well, he will add to his 35-pin lead now. With uh, back uh, with a mark in the seventh frame. 76 in the ball through seven, second string of three. You know, maybe there are bowling gods. I mean, Corey Packard's had pretty high head pin accuracy overall. And at, at the last moment with that nine pin drop, a piece of wood came out of the gutter and just like, doink, the piece of wood just a little bit more centralized. Made the shot just that little bit easier. Maybe some deserved karma after all the splits he's getting. Yeah, that was uh, a tough shot. And you know what? He almost got a strike out of it. It was a skip lob. He dropped it, and all the pins wiggled, and the one and the six remain. That almost turned out to be a strike. That's an Elvis Presley shot. They're all shook up. <laughs> what are we going to do with you? <laughs> Pack it for a spare. Yes. <laughs> you can't believe it. Thought he had toothache at first. <laughs> Yeah, Greg Yakuza calls the excuse me spare. Uh, I think the apology, I am not worthy spare, might even work hey, listen, here. How many times you get robbed, you got to take it while you can. 94 and a ball through eight back-to-back -back spares. And he is just on a mission today. Nick Norcross trying to work out of a deficit. 
89 through eight. On the nose, NFL season is over, but he's got the 7-10 goal post. All right, Mike, how are you playing the wood here? I'm not. Well, I mean, you don't have any choice. I'm, I guess I'm playing it over on the uh, left side. Absolutely. And look at that, I caught that ski ball shot. Hit the I, ball, I apologize, Nick, I told you to go left. You did, and it didn't work out. Nine box, 97 through nine. The number two seed needs some marks in the third string. Down 30 after one. Well, the winner today uh, of the next match takes home $2,000. 1,000 to the runner, runner up, 500 to the third place in this match. Nick, Nick gets nine, seven pin left up, needs to cash in here. So does he, no, he's got, well, is he gonna play the wood? I would say so from this angle as opposed to go right, trying right to go past right to the right of that wood. Yeah. And he used the wood and got it for a spare. 108 in the ball in the 10th. Lost the first 134, 104. Trying to keep it close and make it somewhat manageable. 196 two weekends ago, so don't expect him to go out without a fight in a tough three fill. Marks have not been his friend today on the fills, a lot of them. Yeah, he, he hasn't really put anything together. I mean, has he had back-to-back -back marks that you can think of? Uh, Greg, back-to-back -back marks? I don't recall. Back-to-back -back marks for Nick? I don't think he's had back-to-back, -back, has he? Yet? 111 second string, just 215 through two. Unlike Nick Norcross. Would expect a big third string out of him. Corey Packett, spare five, 99 through eight. Four horsemen plus the nine on lane 15 here in Portsmouth. Good bid. Got the four horsemen the unconventional way. Now he has the nine pin. Nobody today has gotten the kind of sidewall action that he has. Phenomenal. They put new sidewalls here a couple years ago and the pins are flying. Now right on for a 10. 109 through nine, so increase his lead more than likely. Just needs three to win the string, not that it matters. It's total pinfall for three. He's gonna have 35, 40 pin lead going into the last game. Tough to overcome no matter who you are. If somehow it ends up in a tie, Mike, it's gonna be a one string full roll off. I don't like two box roll offs anyway. No, why? Yeah, it's just, I don't know, you, one bad box can throw you away. A string makes it more, gives you more of a chance, I think. Tough for the networks, obviously, for editing purposes, but I think it's better to have, I know Channel 5 had to edit sometimes when it was strings went too long because, but I, I, I like the full string roll off. I talked to a lot of bowlers. They like the one string format better. Obviously, for time's sake, you gotta do two boxes a lot of times, but I like the one string personally for me. That's just my opinion. Two, four, seven, nine, and it comes back, and it goes. Another <laughs> spare and a great shot. Is that another excuse me spare? Ask Greg Guya. Was that an excuse me spare, Greg? No, no, no. That was good. He was a sidewall. I don't know. I mean, it, the, the play, you know, Bolaramo, the pins fly here, of course. You know, utilizing the sidewalls and the lively pin plate action is uh, how you score high in this place. And uh, I, no, no. No excuses about that. Bolaramo, Sanford, Maine, same thing. And the fill on the spare is only, well, Five. 124. Uh, it looks like uh, 124. You are correct. So the lead is now uh, 42 pins. No, 43. 43 pin lead for Corey Packer. All right, back with a third string on WON Sports Network and Canada Pinball Network. Mike Warren, Paul Grant, Greg Guya, back with a third and final string. Championship match to follow next. Stay tuned. Candle Prince of Cancer Rolls coming to Sanford Bowl Arama. This is Bowl Arama right now in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Bowl Arama, Sanford, this Tuesday, March 14th, 11 a.m., Thursday, March 16th, 11 a.m., Saturday, March 18th, 9.30 a.m. and 3 p.m., Sunday, March 19th, 11 a.m. and 2 p.m., Saturday again, March 25th, 9.30 a.m. and 3 p.m., men and women, separate qualifying scores. After the rolls are over, we'll take the top five men's scores, top five women's scores, 
Pair them up one with one, two with two, up through five with five. Sunday, April 16th, also at Sanford Bolarama, Sanford, Maine. Register Candlepins, number four, cancer.com. Unlimited shifts allowed, $80 entry fee, $80 per shift. Well, as many shifts as you like, $80 per shift. Please register Candlepins with a four, cancer.com. Go, ladies, go, and let's get some main bowls there also. You can also donate to the Bowlers charity, Candlepins with a four, cancer.com. That's Candlepins for cancer.com via Venmo. Mike Bourne, talk about your book, If These Walls Could Talk, while we wait for the third string to start. If you are a fan of diner food, you should have a visit sometime to the Red Arrow Diner in Manchester. Actually, they're in other communities, Concord, Nashua as well, and Londonderry. But it's a 100-year-old diner and uh, celebrated vigorously back just a couple of months ago. And I decided to write a book on their history because there were so many interesting people involved that most folks did not know. Talk about the food, we talk about the original chefs, but we talk about some of the really, really big names that were connected to some degree to the diner. So there it is. If you like diner food and you like interesting, unexpected history, pick up if these walls could talk. And that's my self shame or selfless shameless. And no Roger Clemens will charge you a thousand dollars for a signature, right? Oh no, no. I'm I'm at six hundred and forty dollars. <laughs> Do you have a layaway plan or like a no interest for six years? Uh, three months, same as cash. All right. <laughs> Sign me up. I'll get a second copy then. Okay. All right. Third and final string, Mike Morin on the play-by-play. 52-year-plus -play. radio broadcaster. Former Candlepin Stars and Strikes. And there's a strike for Corey Packard. Wow. <laughs> was I supposed to say that or was that you? Can you can do what you want. Okay. I, I'm holding the microphone. And so there's a good start. A convincing statement with a... Uh, multiple mark lead in this third and final game. It's been Packard all the way. It was Packard all the way in the last match against South Hall. And now Corey's looking to uh, pick up maybe some bonus money. If he gets 132 string of high, he'll get another $100 for a three-game series. Well, that's a good start. In the pocket, look at this leave. Wow. Cluster of three, seven, ten. Good luck with this one. He's made some amazing shots today. I haven't seen such a concentration of crazy spares and splits made in a long time. So it wouldn't shock me to see this. No, I was about to say that because these guys can really bring it. When the money's on the line, these guys know how to come through. That's a Paul Grant shot. I want to thank Mike Machichi. Mike Machichi, the captain. We're trying to get him on here later on. He's the captain. And uh, Paul's going to go see if he can uh, have him come over and visit with us for just a moment. They've been bragging about Mike Machici here. <laughs> Mike. You have been dying the, to do this all day long. Coach of the you year. have not. Coach of the year. Yeah. Coach of the world championship. Paul has been trying to have me on this all day, and here I am. Hi, everybody. We didn't pay you either. No, I'm doing this free of charge out of my own goodwill. Okay. Yes. How's everything going today? Everything good. looks good. Everybody's bowling good. You, you made the right. I asked you during the uh, world championship. If Norcross gets a nine bid. Nine drop there. I asked you why you kept people in the game. Figured their arms would get fatigued. You kept them in during the quarterfinals, semifinals, going to the championship round. You said you kept them in the game. Why? Because uh, I feel like uh, if the guys are doing well, then there's no need to make a change. No cross spare. Yeah. Um, and I, that's just been my motto. If there's no reason to change, there's no reason to change, you know. We're all trying to win together. It doesn't matter who's bowling. You and Frank Luca get credit for starting the streaming era? Um, Frank more than I do. I don't. I didn't start streaming. Frank was streaming our like our uh, Friday matches or his Friday matches well before he was even on my team. So um, he did get the streaming going for sure. You want to try some play-by-play? -play? Oh, you know what? <laughs> I've done it before. And it, I, it's not bad. It's just I'm not really in the zone yet. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't had time to warm up my whistle. We'll go to autos on and come back. Yeah, I will. <laughs> I will. So how painful is this for Nick Norcross today? I, you know what? I think he's just not getting the breaks that he's used to with this ball. You know, he throws a lot. He has a lot of English behind his ball when he throws it. And it's just not breaking up for him. But I started talking on the mic, and he threw two marks. I mean, there's a clear. So you're gonna kick me out there? Yeah, right, right, Paul. Spare eight and a spear. Yeah. Yeah. We, we thank two. you for starting the show, but I'll take okay, it from go here. Okay, good, 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 Mike. <laughs> but I do have to ask you, where are you finding these amazing food shots for your Facebook page? By what? 
your, your, the food pictures. Oh, everywhere. I don't. They Waffles must, with graffiti and right. and pizza <laughs> topping. What the heck? I, 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 they must just uh, know what my brain is thinking at the time because you know me and my friends are always looking for new places to go and new things to try and stuff. And have we tried any of those things? Absolutely not. But at least it's fun to think about, right? I want to know <laughs> if you like spumoni. I don't believe I've ever had it. Oh, you got to try it. Yeah. Italian. Oh, oh what we'll a try. Bit by Corey. All right, Mike, I want to try some play-by-play. I'm going to put you on the spot. I want okay. to try some play-by-play. Okay. Um, this is Mike Michichi, by Ma- the way. This is Mike Michichi uh, making his first appearance as a broadcaster. Corey picks up the 10. Corey is um, f- 50 or so, I think? 52. 52. See, I was close. Uh, he comes from Sutton, Massachusetts. He didn't lose the showcase. He didn't know of a bid. So. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I was of the betting man, I would say that he puts this right in the pocket and throws a strike and gets mad at himself because he's not, not filling a spare. The All right, I'll blow away five bucks. Oh, I was pretty close. Yes, he put it in yes, the po- yes. pocket. <laughs> and, and, and you know what? The, the girl running behind him with the balloon, no effect on him whatsoever. He is in the zone. I love it. This is real bowling. This is real bowling. Yeah. It's like, it's like a war guy. I like it. Yeah. I like action. Like it's fun. Right. It's like it's like bowling on the boardwalk. Yes. People walking by and, and everything else. It's yeah, but not for two thousand dollars. Not for two. <laughs> <laughs> no, the next match we'll have to block off the walkway. Yeah. <laughs> Here you go, Mike. Okay. Great right, job. Nice hand for Mike Machichi. Come on, no, finish no, up. No, no, please. Finish <laughs> up his box first. Come on, Cheech. Go no, get it. You're good. All right. Thanks, Mike Machichi. Great guy. Great coach. Coach of the year, I think. Yeah, Kenneth and Bowling. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Keep don't forget the you guys don't, are doing. don't forget the five dollars if it can't for Kent right, donation. Yeah, you're right. And you're your right. new right. Wild Shirts fun. 2.0 also. Okay. See Frank DeLuca made those also. Uh, Rally chat. Now look at this lead, the four and ten. Back to Mike Warren. That was fun. Cheech was fun. He's a fun guy, isn't he? He is. You've been the worst you get the worst day of your life. Cheech walks in the room and everything lights up. As soon as, as soon as he came back with our sheet, he walked away. He didn't want you to he, put the mic like, in his face. He's like a 1,000 watt light bulb, you know? It's a great charisma. Can Nick get some bonus money now? He's on two marks, giving himself a little life to start off the third game. Still lots of room, but he can't let up at all. Corey's at 42 through four. Look at this lead. Oh, me. man. Wow. Left to right, the seven, the five, and the six. And no wood to help. I always say no wood, no luck. Just be amazing in the hole. Pick your favorite pin here, No Mike. wood, no luck, no cross. Pick your favorite pin here, Mike. Went for the six, trying to go into the five and seven. Gets an eight. 35 through two, 45 through three. So for completed frames, he's gotten 10 pins back from the deficit that he was uh, starting the game with. So right now it's 300 to 258. But he does have a box in hand. Double strike will be huge. He threw four bagger two Sundays ago, so listen, this guy's not done. No, but it's almost what it's going to take to uh, to come back here late in the match. Raise the head pin, nothing else. You slipped it over the line, so foot foul, so minus one pin. And end up with officially a seven box. Tough break. Yeah, Sub- 50 through four. yeah, you can see it indicated with the yellow X over there. He wasn't sure how that happened, especially with the tackier approach. You wouldn't expect to overslide much, but sometimes things happen, even to the best. All right, so I've not seen that gesture before with the with the X. No, I made that up. Besides, that would be X for, <laughs> X for 10 anyway. I was just trying to desperately make charades that would hopefully translate to one of you. All right, so I'm not losing my mind. No, uh, no, no. That's me making stuff up. Okay. You lost your mind. You found that I was doing the broadcast with you. <laughs> hey. All right, Corey Packard is addressing the pins. He's down eight just in this string, but uh, quite a substantial lead now at about uh, 60 pins with just four box, five boxes to go. The winner will take on Charlie Collins of Waltham next match and that'll be five officially through four boxes in the match for Corey Packard up 35 through four completed boxes Charlie Collins a Terminator next on Ken Up and Bowling Network and WON Sports later on 
eight for Corey. Yeah, it's a 50-50 match. Well, well, Nick has it through four. Yeah, four Corey through five. So Nick has to hope Corey goes open the rest of the way, and Nick needs to pretty much get at least four, maybe five marks to win this match. I wouldn't put it past him, though. He has been he was clutch in the world tournament. And it looked like a pretty good hit, I thought. Yes, and it was a parallel time on the right, seven left. I think you have to use the wood. Uh, it's not a good situation either way you go, though. Some will go 6-10 and try to kick yep. it over, but it's a bolus call. I, For me, I'd play the wood, but I know it wouldn't get much. A good ball like him, a guy like Jeremy Seaholm, you know, Nick Norcross would go for the pins like that. That's what he did. And, and it almost went. And wow. That's, and that's why he did that, because he's so good. Well, he escaped parallel time. Yeah. Now he's stuck with a seven. Too much dark shadows in me. Great show. All right, just has the seven pin to pick up to complete the box, and he does, giving him 50, uh, 60, I should say, 60 through six. Now it's time for Nick Norcross to turn on the jet engines. Right now, he's up 10 in the string. Eight officially, two boxes completed. There's a good ball there. The nine goal is good break, the two, four, seven. Need some marks. Yeah, he really can't pull this off without marks off the sheet, pretty much. Critical spare. Got it. Still in the game. 16 a ball through five here in the third. But the clock is ticking for young Nick Norcross of Arlington. Works at Uber and Bolodrome. If you bowl there, you've probably seen him. A fixture there. He nominated Al Johnson for the 2023 Hall of Fame. Well deserved. Al, the world record holder for 10 strings, 1525. Was he Hold nominated by Nick? 1993, yes. Nick nominated him, yep. Yeah. Al started campus of cancer, doing a great job. I think the Hall of Fame committee will be meeting maybe in April. They typically do, so we should know. Yep. Well deserved, long overdue. A lot I of bulls deserve to be in there. I have sat in with that group and have uh, voted myself, and it's it's tough, but I, I rarely do you see somebody nominated that does not deserve it. Yeah, eight box, a correction, eight in the sphere, 68 through five, 10, 78 through six. He's up 18 in the string. The match sheet is down to 25, so Nick is still in the game, but needs Corey to go open pretty much to have a chance, unless he can mark out. Back to Mike Warren. All right, here's uh, Corey Packard, and he leaves the four and the ten on what appeared to be a pretty good ball. I guess it evens out with some of the other breaks that he got. I think he'd be the first to admit that, but he's pulled some spectacular Have shots. Have you had that shot in ten pin bowling that leave like that, the four and Oh, ten? sure, yep. You ever make it? Yes. Oh, he almost got it! Oh. What a try! Another inch, maybe, to the left. Even these guys miss, they're always close. They're in the game. Nice 10. 70 through 7, even up in the string. Seven boxes on its own. So 65 pin difference. I'm sorry. There's 25 coming, 25 coming in yeah. to this set. But Corey has a 10 box, so an open frame. That's good news for Nick Norcross. And would, I wouldn't be shocked if he pulls this out. Now well, that helps Nick's cause. And there it is. A. Uh, Three pins down, another seven to go. He'll try to hit very lightly off the head pin on the right side as if it were a half Worcester. And he stole it the back door. <laughs> he missed the object pin. He said a couple that went his way, and that's what he needed. 
to stop the bleeding from Nick Norcross. 80 and a ball through eight. And that makes Nick Norcross probably needs at least four, maybe five marks. On the nose, nine, 10, strike. 88 plus two through seven. Here comes the train collector. <laughs> there is still life. As long as we don't have a derailment. <laughs> yeah. And that's not helpful at all. He knows it. That's why you get two, though. My spear here would be huge. Missed inside. Tough five on the fill. That won't help. 93 through seven. It's going to need a double. That may not be enough. A tough six, brutal. Been there, done that. 99 through eight, time running out. So you'll be meeting Charlie Collins in just a couple of moments. Taking on who? Can't say for sure. It looks like it's gonna be Corey Packard. As I say in tennis, advantage Corey Packard. But not a done deal yet. Imagine Nick throws four strikes more like he did two weeks two weekends ago in the Pro Series doubles. Packard drills nine on that gimme spear. 89 through eight. Favorable wood, but it's far enough up that it is possible to miss it. Yes, that, that doinks a lot of times. Takes his time, stutter step, resets. No false start in the offense. No five yard penalty. Drills it, spare. Back to back, trying to put it away. 99 of the ball through nine. So it doesn't look like he can get 400 this time like he did last time. He got a 434 against Ryan Southall. 100 bucks. Runner up to I'm sorry. 500, sorry, Mike, $500 for the runner up today for this match. 1,000 for the runner up in the finals, 2,000 for the winner. Back to you, Mike. That's the number he's thinking about, the $2,000. Seven on the fill, 106 through nine. Another brilliant performance. Two-time world champion, Corey Packard. Even in defeat, he's very gracious, which I really admire and respect. Tap the wood, missed it. Almost came back anyway. Wood in front of the 6'10". Number three seed trying to beat the number two seed. Face the number one seed, the Terminator, Charlie Collins. Packard, what is that, Mike? Missed the second. Uh, yeah, the Paul Grant third. shot, yeah. Paul Grant special, missed the second, make the third. 10, 117, 375, three sting total, a 125 average. Low cross, 1, 6, 10. Gets the spare. Beautiful shot. 109 of the ball in the ninth. Not enough though. On the spare. Six. 115 through nine. Corey Packett is moving on to the championship match next on Kenneth Mullen Never, WN Sports. Another spare back to back for Nick Norcross. Nice way to finish up. Yeah, a strike would be bonus money. 125 and a ball in the 10th. Final ball of the match. Great job, Mike Warren and Greg Gouillard as always. Great to be with you again. He'll go right and steal a bunch. He'll get seven. <laughs> and he'll end up with a 132, I believe. Uh, 131. Uh, so Correct. 132. Yep. Correct the score, score sheet. 347, final score from Greg Gouillard. Well, final statistics right now, we have 13 marks to uh, 12 in Corey Packard's favor. And the final score, 375 to 347 in favor of Corey Packard. He'll be moving on to face Charlie Collins. All right, we'll talk to the balls next on Camp Mo and Everton, WON Sports Network.
reverse it. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, welcome back. Paul Grant, Mike Moore, and Greg Guillard on Kenneth Mo Network, W on Sports Network. Mike, a great match. Cor yeah, it, it, it really Nick, was. Nick, Nick got hot a little too late. Yeah, he, yeah, true, and he just never quite got the traction that we're used to seeing from him. Yeah. 132 final string, but not enough to be Corey Packard. Corey Packard's moving on. Let's talk to the guys. Let's bring him down, because we have cash. Anybody wants some cash? <laughs> Nick, you got hot late. A little too late. I know you threw a great ball, a lot of bad splits and tough fills. You got hot late in that third string. Nice 132 finish. Corey's been red hot all day. Yeah, Corey bowled well. Uh, it was just really tacky, and this house is famous for being tacky. Just couldn't make the adjustment right away. It was really steering the ball. Couldn't really, like, lay it in there, get it out. Uh, just frustrating. And, uh, you know, you got to make your own breaks. Corey got some breaks. He cashed in on them, and I couldn't do anything. That's how it goes. Well, you're a great competitor. I love your spirit on and off the lanes. The world two-time world championship winner. We have $500 for finishing third today. Congratulations on a great effort today. Thanks. Nick Norcross, Mike Warren with Corey Packard. Come on down. So you broke the streak of the higher seed bowler advancing. Oh, I know. That's as you are below Nick Norcross. Now you are on to, um, I, I, I must confess, I've not seen Charlie Collins bowl. Give me a little... Uh, Nine, nine, ten on him, or whatever the thing is. Uh, he's about a twelve out of oh. ten. Like, he's a up and up and coming young bowler. Uh, he's on our world's team now, uh, coming up this year. Uh, glad to have him. Awesome kid. All right, so, yeah, how do you get these guys? I mean, it's like a big honor to ball with, uh, you know, a defending team. So, uh, it's all Mike Machichi's doing. Like, he he knows all the pickups, and he, he's the he's the captain. He, we. We, we do well by him. All right, so um, how do you pace yourself, or, or don't you? You just go 100 miles an hour all the way through. You're going you're gonna to bowl against a fresh arm and fresh legs. Any change in your game so far? i got to do something different. I'm not sure what. Um, i got a lot more splits on that match. Um, I'm not sure if I'm just not throwing it as hard or not, not much rotation. I don't know what it is. Uh, got to figure it out, though. But you made some amazing shots that I think surprised even you. Uh, I got lucky a few times, that's for sure. <laughs> Once again, the honesty. <laughs> uh, no, it was definitely, definitely not things I was playing that it actually went. I was like, but it, it all evens off. But good breaks, bad breaks, you know. You just got to stick with it. Well, uh, you got time for an ice bath if you need it. So. Oh, yeah, I definitely, <laughs> definitely need a break. <laughs> we'll see you next match. Thank right. you very Thanks, much. Mike. Congratulations. All right, great job, Mike. What a treat to work with you. Tell the viewers about your book before we sign off. It's called, uh, what is it called? Oh, yeah, If These Walls Could Talk. And, and the title is that because there's all kinds of mementos, pictures, celebrities on the walls, and all those pictures have stories for the 100-year-old diner in New Hampshire. All right, thanks, Mike Moore. Thank the Terminator, Charlie Collins in the house, the number one seed, takes on Corey Packard, the number three seed, next on Kenneth Mullen Network, later on on WN Sports. For Paul, uh, Greg Guia, Mike Warren, Paul Grant, and so long for now. Thank you for watching this great game of Kenneth and Bowling. 